Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and welcome to another YouTube video. I'm here today to talk about setting up a beginner's kit for wildlife photography, for bird photography. I get a lot of emails and questions on Facebook, things like that about, you know, I'm just getting started in, in wildlife photography, what kind of equipment should I buy? And I remember when, when I started out, um, you know, the agonizing decisions about when money's tight and you're not really sure if it's worth it to spend a thousand dollars on a lens, it can seem like a lot of money. Um, so I thought I would just do a video on sort of my advice, tell you a little bit about the path that I followed, and hopefully it will help you to set up your own kit as you're getting started in wildlife photography. So um, I guess one thing I'll say right off the bat is I put this here, but I am not gonna recommend that you go out and buy a 600 millimeter $10,000 lens. That is not um, really a great idea if you've, if you've never really done any wildlife photography, you're gonna to wanna to start with a much more modest kit. When I got started, um, this was back in the days of film, and um, I, I saved up my pennies and I was able to buy um, a film SLR. And I'm glad that I went that route as opposed to you know just getting a point and shoot because it let me learn about photography and I worked in a dark room and I was able to kind of develop some basic fundamentals of photography. And it's important to realize that at this stage of your photography, you're, you're trying to learn about light. You're trying to learn about exposure. You're trying to learn how to use a camera to create an image. And equipment is really not the most important piece of the puzzle. However, you also don't want to waste money buying things that you're ultimately going to outgrow really quickly. So um, that's sort of my idea here is to give you guys a, you can make a good kit for about $2,500 um, that ultimately, like if you handed that equipment to me, I could go out and create saleable professional images but you're not going to break the bank either. And you can add, you don't have to drop all $2,500 right away. You can get started with just a camera and a lens and then you can start building. My first camera, like I said, was that film camera. When I bought it, I bought a 28 to 105 kind of wide angle lens, keeping in mind that that would have been on a full frame sensor or, you know, film. And I bought a 100 to 300 millimeter zoom. I had no crop factor. 300 was all I had. So it really wasn't allowing me to get totally into wildlife photography and especially birds like I wanted to 300 millimeters and on a film film camera wasn't I wasn't really able to get after the birds I was taking some snapshots but you couldn't really get close to them you couldn't get that nice blurred out background it wasn't until I sold that those lenses and I was able to save up some more money and purchase a 300 millimeter f4 that I could really get started um, trying to take pictures of birds but before we talk about lenses Let's talk a little bit about the camera body itself. You've probably read, if you've done any kind of Googling around this, that you know you wanna spend your money on lenses, and that's totally true, I, I completely agree. Um, you can have a lens for 10 or 15 or 20 years and it might still work just perfectly. Very unlikely that you're gonna have a digital body for 10 years. Um, so with that in mind, it's not important to go out and spend the most money on, on a body. What I'm suggesting is that you set sort of a budget around $600 and you find based on where you live and how much of equipment's available used or maybe it's there's a great sale at a local camera store or whatever, get the best body you can for about 600 bucks. Um, most likely you're gonna do better off used. So for example, if you're shooting Canon, I'm sure you could find a used 7D for 600 bucks. Um, you could go new and get a Rebel, um, but the Rebel's gonna limit you a little bit in terms of the interface of the camera, but that again, that's not the most important thing here. Even with a Rebel, you can take amazing, amazing pictures and you can learn the basic skills of a photographer. So set a budget around $600. I think if you're interested in wildlife and birds, you should get a crop body. Don't get a full frame body. It's gonna cost more, first of all, and it's gonna be limiting in terms of doing things like macro photography um, and especially birds and wildlife. You're not gonna have the luxury of having a 600 millimeter lens. So if you're on a full frame body and then 300 millimeters is your longest lens, you're gonna have a hard time. So get a crop body, don't spend more than 600 bucks, get the best one you can. If you can get something like a 7D or maybe a Nikon D7200 or an, a, even a used um, D300 uh, from the Nikon, that's plenty of camera for you to learn and not break the bank on. Um, that's my recommendations for, uh, for a body. Now, when it comes to lenses, um, I've got a couple here, but these wouldn't really be your targets if you're just getting started out and money is tight. Um, 
I think that the best bang for buck, best value, most versatile lens that you can buy is a 300 millimeter f4. And the reason for that is that it allows you to get a little bit of nice range. Um, if you're getting it on a 1.6 or a 1.5 crop factor, you're getting a, a decent enough focal length to be able to photograph birds and wildlife, but it also allows you to focus very close. So you can do um, close-ups of frogs or, or insects or butterflies. So especially when you're getting into nature photography and maybe you're not sure if you really want to photograph birds or dragonflies or, or, or landscapes, um, the 300 f4 is going to give you a ton of versatility and they come in, you can often find them used. I think I bought, I used one one time for 700 bucks. So somewhere between 700 and $1,200, let's say, um, you can have a great quality lens that you'll, you'll keep in your kit, even if you wind up getting a bigger lens down the road. It's a, it's a very versatile lens. If you go, if you have a bit more money at your disposal, um, then a one, the, especially the new Canon 100 to 400 is also a great option. This is an amazing lens. And I did wind up selling, my 300 f4 and 400 5.6 to get this lens just because it has all that versatility but you're looking at more like 22 2500 bucks so that would blow your whole 2500 dollars on just one lens so i think the 300 f4 is the most versatile and a great choice for a starter wildlife photographer and if you're interested in landscapes which you might be at this point um, or wide angles if you bought a new uh, camera, you might have gotten a kit, and the kit lens is gonna be just fine for now. You don't have to go out and drop $1,000 on a wide angle lens. It's not gonna really matter. You need to develop your eye as a photographer. You need to learn about composition and exposure and post-processing. So even a kit lens is fine for now. If you wound up buying a used body, anything, any used um, wide angle zoom lens that's kind of approximately equal to 28 millimeters effective focal length will get the job done. So don't. Don't stress too much about the wide angle, I would say, at this point. Um, so now you've got a camera body, you've got two lenses, and you've got to buy some accessories now. So of course, you're gonna need a memory card. Um, if you are interested in landscapes, I would suggest perhaps at some point, doesn't have to be right away, getting a circular polarizer filter, and you don't have to spend a ton of money, 50 to 100 bucks will get you a decent one. Um, the next, piece of equipment that a lot of introductory photographers are hesitant to want to get. If you've never done a lot of photography, carrying around a tripod seems like such a chore, but it really is important. Um, getting a good tripod and a good um, head for that tripod is, is a really important thing. And if you skimp and you spend, let's say, $100 or $150 on a crappy tripod that's not stable and not well built, it's going to be garbage. You're going to wind up getting rid of it, and it's actually going to hinder your photography. Um, more than help it. So I've got some recommendations. Um, I find that Enduro is a great brand for that kind of uh, good quality, good for good bang for buck um, tripod. And they also make a, a nice uh, ball head. So the ball heads, you know, are going to be around $150 to $250. And you can get a nice set of aluminum legs for $100 to $150. Um, it's not gonna be the lightest kit out there. By no means would I trade my, you know, $1,500 Gitso for an Enduro um, aluminum tripod, but it is a solid tripod. It has pretty good ergonomics. It will work well for you and it will help you to develop getting sharper, better quality photos. So it may seem like a lot of money to spend three or four hundred dollars on a tripod, but ultimately it really will be worth it for you. And you are going to wind up using a tripod if you get serious about wildlife photography. So just, you know, accept that. Um, down the road, not necessarily initially, but you're probably going to want to learn about using flash. So again, this is an area where you, you do not need to buy the most expensive flash that Canon or Nikon offers. You can buy the middle range ones. So um, for Canon, that's the, you know, the four, 400 series or for Nikon, it's the six or 700 series. And you can definitely find one used. A lot of people buy flashes and then they decide they don't want to actually learn how to use them properly and they wind up selling them on a used market. So you can probably pick up a, a used good quality flash for 150 or 200 bucks and add that to your kit as well. And it's really important to learn how to use flash properly in, in wildlife photography. It really opens up a lot more um, creative opportunities. You can shoot longer, you can shoot on, on in different lighting conditions. So at some point you're gonna to wanna to add a flash to your kit. It does not have to be right away. 
um, you're starting to accumulate quite a, a variety of things here and you're gonna need a place to put them. So you're probably gonna want, most likely if you're into wildlife photography, you're probably gonna be hiking around trying to photograph things, you're probably gonna want a backpack. Um, I've always used the low pro line of backpacks and I think they're great. I think they work really well. Um, and there's so many models and there's so many sales all the time that you can, I'm sure, find a backpack for, I would say, under $100. My recommendation though is to, as you're starting out, get something a little bigger than your current kit because there's a very good chance that you're going to be buying more stuff, more lenses, more accessories. So get something a little bigger than your current kit to give you room to grow into. And once again, the used market could be your friend here because probably some other guy bought a backpack that wound up being too small for him and is selling it now for less than half price. So just do your research here a little bit. I'm sure you can find a bag for, for not too expensive at all. And um, now as you keep going on with your photography, I've, I've mentioned you've got a crop body and a 300 F4. As you, uh, you know, save up a few more pennies, maybe you get a little money for Christmas or something like that, you can consider a 1.4 teleconverter, adding that to your kit. Um, again, you don't need to have the Series 3, the brand new one. You could buy one of the older ones. You can probably find one for 100 or 150 bucks, and that's going to give you that extra 40% range. Now, if you're on a Canon platform, you're at 300 times 1.4 times 1.6. You're up over 600 millimeters. This is the kind of focal length where you can really start to do some serious bird photography. Um, you've got a decent tripod, you've got a flash, and you've got something to carry it all in. That's about all you need to get started in wildlife photography. That's what I started with. Ultimately, when I started taking, you know, fairly decent quality bird photos, that's exactly what I had. I had an old 10D crop body, I had a 300F4, a 1.4 converter, and I had, you know, a basic tripod and a backpack to carry it around. That's it. That's all you really need. So I would say for between two and three thousand dollars, so I'm going to say twenty-five hundred bucks you can get started in wildlife photography. And I'll make a list of all these things with links. I've made a page on my website that you can follow the links to see what kind of gear I'm talking about here. Um, I'll probably also follow this up at some point with an intermediate add-ons video where you know once you've got all this stuff and you start thinking seriously about what comes next, um, I'll follow up with this video later. But for now, I hope this video helped you to make some equipment choices and get out there and get taking pictures because that's the most important thing. A lot of people get really hung up on gear, but ultimately with a decent quality lens and camera, and more importantly, some knowledge about your subject matter and about your camera and learning about exposure and post-processing and birds, if that's your subject matter, um, you can go out and have a lot of fun and take some beautiful photos and really enjoy yourself. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.